In this clip, we'll begin looking at how we can start to add different kinds of materials and textures to our models in 3ds Max to give them the look of different kinds of surfaces. So here we have our sail ship model. And if you'd like to follow along with this clip, you can go ahead and open M104 Begin, and that will let you pick up where we're starting here. So right now, you can see that everything is just a plain gray. If I turn off our edged faces by hitting F4, you can see here, take off those edges, everything is just gray. And what we want to do is start to differentiate the sail material from something that may be like fiberglass or something that may be metal. And so we can start to add different materials to our objects here. Now, before we do this, there's going to be sort of a split. So we're going to have the default scanline renderer, and you'll talk about rendering in the next couple of lessons, but it's basically how we're able to get a final image out of 3ds Max. And there's a, a basic renderer, and Arnold is actually now included in 3ds Max. And so we're going to look at two different ways. One of those will allow us to see our materials here in our viewport, and the other will allow us to add the materials for Arnold. And so we'll look at those uh, in the second part. Let's just look at the basic uh, way of adding materials at this point. So the first thing that I want to do is go and make sure that I'm set in the render setup. So under rendering, render setup, I want to set this to scanline renderer. Yours may be set to Arnold, so go ahead and set that over. And that will affect the kinds of materials that we're able to see when we start to add these. So I'm just kind of move up here. And let's open our material editor. So we're going to come up here all the way to the right to the material editor and open this up. This is going to open our slate material editor. Right in here where you see this grid, that's going to be sort of our workspace. And this is a node-based editor. So it allows us to bring in different elements as nodes and wire those up. Maybe you've used another node-based application before. Over here on the left, these are the different kinds of nodes that we can bring into this workspace. And then we'll see the parameters for those specific nodes over here on the far right. So in this case, we're working with the scanline renderer. You can see the different kinds of materials we can add listed here. There's some specialty materials here, but we're just going to start with a standard material. So all I'm going to do is just drag it over here into our workspace. We can zoom in with the same hotkeys as for our viewport. And you can see here is our Material 3 standard. If I double click on this, you can see it brings in the parameters over here on the right hand side that we can change. We also see these connections over here on the left, and then there's a connection on the right. So what we want to do is now apply our material to our object. So let's say that we want to choose the sails and we want to apply this material. We can do that a few different ways. There's a button right up here, assign material to selection. We can also right click on the material and say assign material to selection. And that's going to assign that material. Now it doesn't look like anything has changed. Let's kind of move this a little bit so we can see what's going on here. And so what I want to do is with this material selected, I'm going to go into the parameters and begin to change some of these. So if you want to change the basic color of a material, you're going to go into the diffuse. It's going to be right in here and you can just click on the swatch and maybe we want this to be a nice red color. We can choose our color from in here. Say OK. And you can see this diffuse color is represented here in the preview and also on the object that it's assigned. You can see nothing else is red only the object that we've assigned this material to. We can also change the shininess of this. We can change the specular level, and you can see where that gets a little bit more shiny. Also the glossiness, and you can see that curve. If you take it down, it's a little bit of a broader spec versus taking it up, it's going to be a sharper spec. So we can come in here and start to modify the just the elements of our standard material to get different looks. For instance, if you want plastic, it would be uh, kind of one color and specularity versus metallic might be a little bit different. But we have other specialty materials that will allow us to get very specific on the kind of look that we're trying to get. But just from a basic point of view, this is how we can start to add materials. Let's create another material here. And I'm just going to drag another one in. And this one I want to add to the body. So I'm just going to select the body geometry, go ahead and add that material. And this time I want to add a texture map. So maybe we've painted a texture map that we want to apply. And this is going to be the same process for adding other kinds of nodes. Any kind of texture map that you add, you're going to add it as a bitmap. And so we can either 
add this node, drag it over into here, or we can come over to whatever connection we want the bitmap to be attached to and drag out from here. So let's say we want our bitmap to be attached to the diffuse. So I'm just gonna click on the little dot and drag out to the left and release. That's gonna bring up this window where we can choose what we wanna add. We'll go into general and make that a bitmap. This will allow us to come in and add our bitmap. So I'll add ship color. Again, this is gonna be in your 3ds Max project that comes with your project files. And let's open that up. So now this ship bitmap is driving the diffuse color rather than any sort of color that we may have added. So here you can see there's a little M next to this. This lets us know that there's a map assigned to this channel. And if we come down all the way to the bottom to maps, we can see that there's a map that's driving the diffuse color. Now we can't see it here right now, but it is on there. If we come up here to show shaded material and viewport, that will allow us to see that texture. We can also come in here under our viewport settings, under materials, and we can say shaded materials with maps. And that will allow us to see that map actually in our viewport. So there we can see that's gonna be added as a color texture. And then we can also change the specularity of that and make it a certain amount of shininess to make it look plastic or fiberglass or metal or whatever it is that we want. Now, if we're gonna be using Arnold to render, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. Let's go ahead and set that to our render because you're gonna be using Arnold uh, to go through the render process. So let's go into render setup and we'll change this scanline renderer to Arnold. And I'm just gonna change this target to active shade. I'm just gonna move this off to the side. Now let's go back into our material editor and because we're using Arnold, we're going to want to bring in an Arnold material. You can see there's an Arnold section right down here. And so let's come under Arnold surface and let's just bring in a standard surface. All right, let me go ahead and double click on that to load up the parameters there. And you can see that those are a little bit different than the parameters we had with our standard material. So let's go in and let's actually just add it to the back here. So we'll select this back fin and we'll come in here. You can see there's a few more parameters in here. Let's just assign this material to our selection. And then to be able to see what's going on with that material, I'm gonna come into the render setup. And remember Arnold, active shade, and let's go ahead and just hit render. And that'll bring in and do sort of an active render of our scene. So I'm gonna move this kind of off to the side. We'll use this to kind of look at as we modify this material. So you look at the sections here, we've got coding, basic parameters, base color, that sort of thing. So let's go in on this one, instead of diffuse, it's gonna be base color. And so let's go in and add a color. We'll just add like a blue color and make it kind of blue. And you can see that that's reflected in that material. If we come down a little bit lower, you can see there's a reflections here where we can come in and increase reflections and change the metalness of it and that will update. You can do things like subsurface scattering on this. If you wanna do that, you can see there's settings down here. So you got a lot more flexibility and it's a lot more complex in many ways to go ahead and, and get the type of material that you wanna get. Although you can get some really uh, great stuff using the Arnold render, which is now integrated into 3ds Max. The same thing applies here with adding nodes. So you see all these little dots are connections and you can add all kinds of different nodes to those connections, just like with the standard material, although there are gonna be nodes that are specific to Arnold materials. So just remember, you can go into your slate material editor, bring in your materials based on whatever render it is that you're using. You can start to go into that material, change the parameters to get the different look that you want. And you can also add different kinds of nodes by connecting them to these different connections. Well, that's just a quick look at adding materials to create different kinds of surfaces. Next, Kyle's gonna take you through the process of actually rendering your scenes in 3ds Max.